Uh, well, it's um, quarter to eight in the morning, and I'm in Bournemouth. And he kind of went, no, they're too wide. They won't fit on the bed all the way along. Well, we're making decent time. Um, hour and a half to go. Still, I'm looking about after. Uh, it's lovely, very nice. Um, yeah, so I've just done, it's now half ten. Which is not, no, it's not now 11 o'clock, obviously. It's 11 o'clock. Oh, it's 11 o'clock. Um, yeah, so we just done ten to, ten to the top. That's that's Werner Kay's thing. Used to be pot master when he was Ken Bruce. We now done ten to the top. Um, there were two quizzes. One of them they ask you ten pop music questions, and then they got rid of that one. And they are they got another quiz they brought back in where they ask ten pop music questions. The first quiz was great, the second quiz is rubbish. How does that work? I like Van Gogh. I think he's entertaining. It, makes me, it does make me laugh out loud sometimes. Uh, but it's all to do with the scoring. It's just too complicated. When I used to play Pop Master, right, the system, on the end. By the time I got one right, that's actually, you know, that's three points, and six points. You kind of, if it's six points, it was two, and that kind of thing. And when if I got that many right, then that went to a fist, and I put one on that hand. And I could calculate my score at the end of it. This one is just way too tricky. How many have I got? Like, I've doubled, right, I'm up to four now. I'm on a bonus. I've got to play a joker. It's painful. It is just painful. It is exactly the same quiz. Ten pop music questions. Pretty much the same kind of genre. Pretty much the same kind of thing. Scoring's rubbish. Well, what a difference a scoring makes. So, just my personal opinion, of course. But I don't know anyone who's actually said, no, it's much better. Right, we're just in the M3. Uh, we're now 57 miles from Felma. We can go to Felma? Yeah, we can go to Felma. Something like that. Certainly, felt some way. Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure how, how far we are. We're 72 miles away from central London, like it says. Uh, and um, how far away from the 25? I'm not sure. But we're still in the AM. See, the way I timed it was this. If I started driving at 5, then I would clear the 25 by about... Well, that's not right, is it? It was right, yeah, because I'd drive at 5. Clear the 25 by about 6, quarter to 6, before it starts to get scary. And then you're heading away from London, so you're heading away from the traffic, with a plan of being in Bournemouth at sort of 8 o'clock for the school run. So I'm parked up getting it off while they're doing a school run then I've got to get from there down to Weymouth by night might be a bit of the school run wasn't too scary very countrified bit of sea um, and then I'm loaded by about 10 by which stage everybody is safely ensconced in work and it's quiet then I've got to get back to the 25 and in the Hounslow around about 1 o'clock-ish get there for 1 o'clock-ish get it off hopefully by about half 1, 2 and where I am kind of felt I was now Hounds house pattern Hounslow Way, up to the 25 round and out. Like I say, there might be another job in it, but I mean, by the time I'm tipped, I would have driven for six, seven hours, and I've got to get home, and I've done me two tens, like I say, so, and it's Friday afternoon. And if I do get home, there's other bits and pieces I could do, there's other obviously bits and pieces I could do. So, and of course there's always, we we got, Still an hour and a half, hour and a quarter's worth of driving, and like, like, the, like the TV show says, only thing can happen in the next half hour. But let's hope it doesn't. Well, if it does, let's hope it's good. Right, time for a break. Fleet services. I like fleet services. It's where you park the lorry, it's kind of in the middle of the woods. You can see the trees up ahead. And, um,. Oh, it's like being a centre part. <laughs> it's, you know, away from the road and it's secluded. It's like, I, I get a little tent 
No, I don't do that. I don't do that. That's ridiculous. Uh, yeah, so fleet services for a stop and maybe some fuel. And on hit the road again, should be there around about one ish. We've got currently 41 minutes and 26 miles. Uh, stop. Right, that's it. That's it. Rested, fueled up, ready to go. We're going to shoot straight off because there's an Arctic sitting behind us. I hate people. Pe <laughs> it's easy for me to say. Uh, I hate keeping people waiting. Right, so we are now uh, quarter past one. That's right, quarter past one. It's weird. Because I started so early, and it's like, oh, here we go. Uh, well, they think lorries are coming out of here. They might want to sort of set this up so we can actually see to get out. Um, yeah. I've actually done two jobs. Uh, I've done all the way down to Bournemouth, tip that one, that'd be a lucrative job. And then I've got um, Weymouth back to Hounslow, and I know that pays decent money. But you think, well, in my mind, it's still only one o'clock. I can't finish work at one o'clock. Got work to do. I must soldier on. I must do more work. The problem is, of course, I'm up against A, getting out of bounds, though, which is proving to be difficult because I'm trying to get Mick out of the same area. Um, and it's not proving to be easy. And I've got work booked in for Monday. And, of course, I'm limited by the clock. I would like to say I'll finish with, like, um, two, two and a half hours left. It's going to take me an hour and a quarter to get home. I've got to find a job I can do in an hour and a quarter. It's not looking likely. Still, let's soldier on, onwards to the M25. I might be lucky. I might get a house out of Dunstable. We'll see. I had a comment, we do this thing Sunday Q&A, um, where people basically, um, they think it's a question and answer thing. Normally, I, people ask questions and I say I don't know, and then other people tell, tell me the right answer. Uh, but one of the guys in the Sunday Q&A said he'd like to hear the stories more. Now I did a one recently, the, the fisherman story, if I think about it. Really. Um, and I quite like the fisherman story. And I said, well, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I get these stories. I don't really want to just necessarily tell stories on my channel for the sake of it. But I'll put them on while I'm driving. And they'll go in with the, um, I'll sort of zhuzh up the life on the road a little bit. So this is the robot story. The robot story was... Um, I read in a book called Walking on Glass by Ian Banks. It's my life, it probably is my life, my favourite author, I should think. Um, and the story goes something like this. So, there's this guy, and it's this sort of a science fiction thing, a sort of kind of like, or a mythical thing, kind of a magic thing. And he lives in the castle, and he's a courtier, he lives in the castle, and he absolutely loves his life. He loves the king, and he's sort of courtier, and he works for the king all day, and he's sort of hand to the king and looks after him he's fantastic he's great the thing is also he's falling in love with the king's daughter he's falling in love with a princess and so he spends all day with the king and he spends all night with a princess and the princess is a very demanding lady and he's sort of like he's basically knackered he's, he's running out of time here like you know so um he goes to the wizard and he says he says i'm exhausted he says, can you give me some kind of elixir to pet me up a bit? Or he says, can you clone me or something like that? He says, I can't clone you. He says, but I'll tell you what I can do. He says, I've got this. And he goes in the cupboard, he pulls out his clockwork thing, and he says, I can make another you. He says, so what you can do is you can choose, and you can sleep a bit. And the guy goes, oh, yeah, he says, that'd be great. If you could do that, terrific, like, you know. So he makes another in. 
So what the guy then gets to do is he gets the best of both worlds. Um, and he kind of, he's sort of with a king, some of the time, and he's with a princess, some of the time, and the rest of the time, the other him, the robot him, takes over. And, but then something happens. He's out one day on his own, oh, attack, boom, dies, in the woods, disappears. Which leaves the robot. But the robot can still do it. But the robot can do it all. Because the robot only needs like two minutes a day to charge himself up. Which just winds himself up with a big key. So he can carry on spending all day with a king. And all night with a princess. And no one's any the wiser. Until one day the robot develops a conscience. And he thinks this isn't right. They think, the king thinks I'm somebody else. The princess thinks I'm somebody else. I'm going to have to turn myself in. So the robot goes up to the king and he says, tells him the truth. He says, this is the thing. I'm not the guy. I'm just a robot. And he goes, click. And pulls open his breastplate. And the king looks at him and he goes, funny you should say that. Click. Ian Banks. If you ever get a chance, give him a read. He's crazy. M25, here I come. No, I don't. Turns out we're going down the M3. M3 right in the field. But here we go. 6.8, 6.9, 6.9, 6.9, 6.9, 6.9, 6.9, 6.9, 6.9, 6.9, 6.9, 6.9, 6.9, 6.9, 6.9, 6.9, 6.9, 6.9, 6.9, 6.9, 
done. Uh, quarter to two in Felton. I will stop and look for something else because it's just too early. But like I say, I've only got about a couple of hours left on that clock and it's going to start to get scary now at 25. I might actually have to look something else. I might not. Um, I've got my Monday morning booked in anyway. I've got Mick booked in. I've got the boys booked in for the morning. So, so I guess go home and do something in the office. And uh, next week, back to it. Taking care and taking money. It's a Friday afternoon and I'm in Slough.